Greetings, and welcome to an introduction of illusionistic ceiling designs and artwork. In this video, we'll be focusing primarily on artwork from the ancient Roman period, spanning from the 13th to sometime in the 17th century. The term illusionistic was most commonly implemented for its properties of presenting artwork with a unique perspective, often advocating great depth and scale. Renaissance art was possibly the best period for the style during the European periods between the 13th to the 16th century. This type of design was also commonly found during the 17th century France by using an architectural method known as Baroque. Baroque art is a 17th century European art form with expressions of complex forms and distinct ornamentation. Finally, a more theatrical approach to ceiling artwork would be dubbed as an architectural art known as Rococo, or a method of the late Baroque period, starting sometime in the mid-18th century. This would be approximately 1730 that this practice began. Our first piece of artwork that we would be inspecting closely will be Antonio da Correggio's work of art, Assumption of the Virgin. This type of artwork that Correggio designed was known as a fresco. Uh, this translation for fresco would be from Italian to English, uh, meaning fresh, or alternatively, al fresco would mean outdoors. A uh, type of artistic method by giving the viewer a perspective with anamorphic art. This gives the illusion that the occupied space around the viewer is much larger and potentially appears infinite in an otherwise closed-in or obstructed space. Back in his day, Correggio's art was mostly underappreciated, but as time went on, it became a major inspiration for painters who practiced in the Baroque method. Here we could see a somewhat symmetrical fresco sprawled out in the half-dome-shaped ceiling of the Parma Cathedral in Italy. When standing in the center, directly below where the black dot lies in the center, the viewer gains a perfect perspective of what can be interpreted with Correggio's design. Visually speaking, as Assumption of the Virgin gains depth, so too does it simulate our own reality, granting the illusion that the ceiling is open and expands all the way out to the heavens, as the characters depicted within it spiral in many circular layers. In the very center, at the top, we could see a beardless Jesus as he descends to meet his mother. At the base, in each of the four corners, we also see the four protector saints of Parma. The first saint here is Saint John the Baptist, carrying a white lamp. The second saint, saint is Hilary of Poitiers donning a yellow robed mantle. In the third corner, we could see St. Thomas, also inferred to be in St. Joseph, although Thomas was said to have been the only one who had witnessed the assumption of Mary into heaven. Uh, he is accompanied by an angel, carrying the Maridam Paul Leaf. Finally, the fourth corner is St. Bernard, the only figure looking up towards Jesus and his surroundings. Our next subject will be taking a look at Triumph of the Name of Jesus by 17th century Italian artist Giovanni Battista Galli. This fresco is located in the nave of the church of the Gesù in Via degli Astali, Rome. Also known as Tu Gesù, Gesù in Italian would mean Jesus. The Basilian Church displays some of the most impressive artwork of the 16th century. Galli has displayed multiple instances of his artwork escaping from an established frame, going so far as to simulate a sky, passing over the clouds, painted on wooden boards, plus painted shadows to enhance the immersion of the entire artwork, and perfectly implementing both three-dimensional ivory statues and two-dimensional figures, both in and out of the central frame. 
triumph in the name of Jesus refers to an age when which preceded to Gesu's construction. As in the late 16th century, there was a challenge to the authority of the church in Rome, which sparked the Protestant Reformation, which jump-started by German teacher and monk Martin Luther. Owing directly to structures of the Renaissance era, such as the crossing dome of Tu Gesu, and a callback to Trajan and Hardian's Pantheon Dome of 125 CE, there are elements of its design that accentuate its illusionistic properties, allowing incredibly complex and detailed paintings to take full effect in simulating true depth to the viewer. Externally, the facade of Tu Gesu displays a Baroque style, notably the scrolls seen on either side of the structure's roof. This portion also serves as a possible reference to Leon Battista's Alberti's Santa Maria novella of 1470, where the structure also appears to have that scroll-like feature on its facade. Returning to the interior, the Triumph of Jesus displays the Baroque method by its traditional European values being exhibited by visual storytelling, architecture, and even traditions such as music making, dancing, and sculpting during the 17th century. This concludes my brief analysis on illusionistic ceiling designs. I hope you enjoy the video.